In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel the Statement of Activities report, which is basically like the Profit and Loss or Income Statement report. Let's get into it with Intuit, QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our not-for-profit company or organization dashboard. Let's go on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. So we're going to be in Excel. We're going to be considering our statement of activities, which is basically like our income statement type of report. So here's our statement of activities that we created in Excel. And this is kind of like the format that we are shooting for. So remember, when we're thinking about the statement of activities, there's a lot of information we want. So we want to have all the information that's necessary for reporting purposes. And then we also may want to make it somewhat digestible in some way, shape or form so that people that may not be professionals in terms of just looking at reports. And even if they are, these are kind of more complex reports in some ways than fi normal financial statement reports due to the fact of ha us having multiple columns for restrictions and unrestrictions and so on and so forth. So we want to make it uh, digestible in that way as well. So what we have then is the statement of activities where we're going to have the things that are kind of like revenue, but not exactly like revenue. Those are going to be, you know, the contributions, the money that's coming in, the cash flow that's coming in. You could think of it or the revenue or the uh, inflows. And then we have the expenses, things that were expended in, in order to help and not really generate revenue. That would be a for profit type of term, but in order to help do what we want to do in order to help facilitate the activities that we want to facilitate which would be primarily the programs for the not-for-profit and therefore when we think about the expenses uh it's it's useful for us to group this by function in some ways too so we want to then look at these expenses and do something a little bit different than the for-profit and that is that we want to see them by what they're used for the programs and then the admin and the fundraising why is this important because what people really want to see in a not-for-profit is look how much of the money that you're spending is going into the, the actual function, which is the programs. That's what the point is of the not-for-profit versus the management and uh, the admin and the fundraising. Because if it's disproportional to management and fundraising, it would seem that the not-for-profit is not uh, streamlined enough, right? It's not, it's not uh, efficient enough. So that's kind of what you're looking for. And in order to do that, you need to in some way break the expenses out basically by function. However, we also want to see them by basically natural category, which is what we're expected or normal kind of reporting, which would be the rent expense, salaries expense, telephone, and so on and so forth. So we want to have both those integrated in some way that's not going to be too uh, overwhelming for people to basically uh, look at. So we've got that here. And then we also need to be breaking out the items that are going to be restricted items versus the non-restricted items. We want to see in the current period, the the basically restricted versus non-restricted items for the income statement all right so now let's take a look at what we generated in and of course the income statement then would be you know the revenue or the money coming in the similar to revenue type of items the expenses then and that would bring us down to the net income which is going to be termed here net increase in net assets so we're not going to call it net income net increase in net assets why is it net increase in net assets what does that even mean You'll recall that the net assets is going to be the equity section for basically the balance sheet, right? The balance sheet, we had the net assets, which is assets minus liabilities. The income statement is the increase in the current period of that net asset amount. So the net assets, net income rolls into the equity section, which here is called net assets, and therefore is the increase in that amount. So it's not net income because that, that, impl that implies profit, in, I, I, what I'm assuming that's the reason. So we have to call it something else. So we're going to call it uh, increase in net assets. So we have increase in net assets in accordance with these two categories. And here's the total increase in the net assets. And then we have the further schedule that we broke out that's going to be breaking out our expenses that we need to be broken out by uh, nature as well as by category, including the programs, management, and fundraising. Okay, so let's see if we could see how, how we can format this in QuickBooks to, to do all that. So we're going to go back over into QuickBooks and we're going to say, let's open up our reports on the left hand side. We're going to be opening up the P&L, the profit and loss, the income statement. So let's open up an income statement. And uh, here we have it. Let's close up the old hamburger. Let's hold down control and scroll up just a bit. Get up to that one, two, five, which is where we like to be. Then I'm going to go back up top, changing the dates from 010120 uh, to 013120. 
and that'll bring us for the month of January. That's what we want to take a look at. So here's like our normal income statement, a profit and loss type of report where we have the income, which is going to be the inflows. And, and again, you may not want to term it income because that implies kind of profit. These are these are going to be the, the inflows. There's not really a transaction that happened. Most of the, this is going to be from basically donations that we've got up top. But the income name here is part of the functioning of QuickBooks. It's part of kind of like the programming again. We can't really remove it. This drop down is because we had to set these up as income type of accounts and therefore they'll be in the income uh, subcategory. Also note, of course, the name is going to be called profit and loss. And uh, and th the normal name for a for profit is income statement. So it's a little different than that. And then but here we want to call it the statement of activities possibly. So I could change that. We could say, all right, let's change this and call it the statement of activities. I could change that actually in the QuickBooks. I could change it by clicking here to update it or I can go into the customized reports up top and I want to go into the uh, header and footer and we want to change the name of the report to the statement of activities. So that's not a problem. And we can actually save that, of course, if we memorize this report, then we don't have to change that every time. We can go back in there and uh, find it each time. So then we have the income. Again, might not be the best term, but but like we say, we have to have those two that term that way because it's in the programming of basically QuickBooks as a category. So we have the income category and then the expenses and then of course the net income. And again, we don't typically call it net income in the not-for-profit organization. It's going to be a change in net assets. Same thing, however, and again, we can't really change the net income line. It shouldn't bother us too much. We, we all, you know, have a good idea of what this means. It's going to be the, you know, the change in net assets, the net income. However, we can't adjust that. It's not an actual account for us to adjust. So then if we go into the income accounts here, we have our, our inflows, we have the contributions restricted, the ones unrestricted, uh, the, the government grants, and then we broke out uh, the net assets released, so that the transfer from the items that are gonna be released from the restricted to the unrestricted. And then of course, in the expenses, we have the expenses broken out by nature here. So now they're broken out by nature, what we don't see in this format, and we have to basically do it this way because this is how QuickBooks normally does it, right? And QuickBooks normally breaks this information out in a PL by nature, not by function. How do we break it out by function then? Because we need that information as well, what we used these expenses for. We need to do that, we, we did that with classes. So, in a, so then we can go up top and say, okay, let's turn on the classes and go, let's see the drop down here and turn on the classes. And then we're gonna say, run that report. So now, because we used the classes, now note we, we added subclasses for the restricted items which we said we could do or we could do it in another report with the job costing type of report as well so but we added them here in both ways so now this report's kind of a long report right we got the restricted items and the total uh restricted here and then we've got the unrestricted and then that includes all the programs and and everything under under unrestricted the two programs the admin and the fundraising and then we get the total unrestricted what I would like to see is simply the total unrestricted and the total restricted. Now you would think that you can customize the report and say, maybe I could filter that. If I go then go down here, I'd like to go to the classes and just see the total columns, but they won't allow you to, to basically just see the total columns, right? So there's nothing here that'll allow you to basically restrict it down to the bare bones, just the total. We can't collapse the column. In the desktop version, you actually can do that. It's a, it's a little finicky sometimes, but you can kind of do that. So that's something that we could adjust uh, basically in Excel. And this isn't a, and I know I did a lot of formatting in the balance sheet. That's not really difficult formatting. We just hide the columns. We're just going to collapse these columns. So in essence, what you want to do is I just want to collapse these columns and see the total restricted and then collapse these columns and see the total unrestricted and the total column. So uh, that we can do fairly, fairly quickly in uh, Excel. So what I wanna do up top is, is we've got this report and it's called the Statement of Activities. Let's go ahead and customize and save this report. So I'll customize and save it. And then I'm gonna say save. Now, if I wanted to go into this report again and not have to change the name, I could go into the reports down below 
we can go into the customize uh, the custom reports. So we'll go into the custom reports and we want the statement of uh, activities. So then we go into the statement of activities and there we have it. Now I'm going to go ahead and do some formatting to this report. Now, if, if we keep it like this, we can we can export it like this and save it as a PDF file just like we did before. So I could save it as a PDF file in this format. So I could say, uh, let's go ahead and print this. I'm going to print it as a PDF file. And I'm going to say we're going to print it, print it. I'm going to print it using the cute PDF printer. So I'm going to print it as a PDF file. So I'm printing it as a PDF file. And I'm going to say print. And it's going to ask me where do we want to put it. Pretty soon it's going to ask me any time now. There it is. There it is. So then I'm going to say I want to put it into the QBO. And I'm going to pull this over here and I'm, so I can see the name. And I'm going to call this the statement STMT of activity statement of activities and then we'll go ahead and save that so i'll close that now i'm going to export it to excel where we can do a little bit further uh formatting and and that's typically what we would want to do with this type of report we probably want to you know uh, collapse those columns so let's take a look at what that would look like i'm going to then export it to excel i'm going to say excel let's open this up it opens down here if i'm using chrome so it's going to open up in this little bar down here for chrome now what I want to do is take this and put it onto the other worksheet I have so I can have another tab in the prior worksheet. So I'm going to open the prior uh, one that we exported, which was like the balance sheet, the statement of, of net position, statement of, of financial position. I'm going to add the tab here and paste it into here. So I'm going to add a tab to this sheet. Then I'm going to go back to the other sheet that we just exported. I want to take the whole thing and I can do that by selecting this little triangle up top. And that'll highlight the whole sheet. You don't want to highlight just part of it. You got to take the whole sheet here. And then, or you can you can be off here somewhere and hit Control A, and it should highlight the whole sheet. Uh, didn't do it. I won't do it that way. I'm gonna hit the triangle, <laughs> and then I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna copy it. Now I'm copying the entire thing, and therefore I have to be on cell A1, or I have to highlight the entire thing again. In other words, if I'm anywhere else other than A1, and I try to paste this, don't do this because it won't work. I'm trying to paste it normal, paste it the first one. It's going to say, hey, I can't do that because the entire, I need every cell here because you copy the entire thing. So you got to be on cell A1 or highlight the entire worksheet, right click, and I want to paste normal. So you can hit control V if you want. I'm going to say paste the first one. So there we have it. So I like to do that before you do any formatting. And then I'm going to go to the view tab. So if I go to the page layout view, we can see it does not fit on one page. So we're gonna have to deal with that. We're gonna have to go back to the prior tab and say, here we have it. Okay, so first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll remove the the header. It's I don't like this merged cell because it might stop me from doing some of the things I wanna do, which is to hide some cells. So what I'm gonna do is select that one, go to the home tab, alignment, unmerge. And then I'm gonna go down here. I'm gonna go home tab, alignment, get rid of the merge. And one more time, we'll do it here. We're going to go home tab, alignment group, get rid of the merge. Now, all we want to do, what I really want is the total columns, total restricted and um, uh, and the total unrestricted. That's all I want at the, at the first part here. So I'm just going to hide these columns. All I'm going to do is put my cursor right on column B and drag over to column E, B to E. Let go, right click the selected area. So we're going to right click on the selected area and hide it. Then we're going to hide from, from here all the way over to the total unrestricted. So that's from G to L, G to L, let go, right click the selected area and hide that item, hide those. And that's basically it. So now we've got uh, actually the program, total program. I don't need that either. I want the total unrestricted. I'm going to highlight M right click on it and then hide that too and that's basically it so that it looks like kind of tedious but really that's that's the core of what you would need to do because now you have something that's basically uh, you know presentable you can, it looks similar to what we have over here so if we go back over here to our uh this excel worksheet we've got the with restriction without restriction 
and we've got our, our total columns here and that lines up to the 44 244 and the 234 656 so if i line this up down that's the 44 244 and the two and the 234 6 uh, 56 and then if we were to add those up add those up they add up to the uh, 278 900 so that's that's really the essence of of uh, what you want to do then you can further clean things up or make any further adjustments at that point in time i'm also going to rename this tab down here i'm going to double click on this tab i'm going to say that this is going to be a let's just call it statement of act activities and there we have it and then we might want to like i like i say in here i might want to just say i don't need the total so i'm going to double click here and i'm going to say restricted and then i'll double click here and say unrestricted then the total makes sense over here and then and then we've got income we might want to call it revenue or something like that but that's fine contributions restricted contributions unrestricted note that you could put this into one line item and just call it contributions if we wanted to at, at you know at this point because then we'll break it out between restricted and unrestricted up here i like having those two lines because it's it's kind of helps me to to visualize it the other way you can deal with that if you didn't want to make the an, an adjustment obviously in uh, excel is you could set those two items up as in QuickBooks, you could have a parent uh, account, which was called, which would be called contributions, and then underneath it, contributions restricted and unrestricted, and then you could collapse them, as you can, similar to this this income collapsing line. So that's one way that uh, that you can you can deal with that. But if you if you brought this into here as as well, you could say, oh, maybe I want to bring the contributions up top here, and then just call this two three seven zero zero zero, and then. I wouldn't need this line at all so we can just break the contributions out that way and then delete this line and hopefully and i don't think that should uh, should change anything i'm going to say that this then is going to be equal to the sum of these and this is going to be equal to the sum of these and this is going to be uh, that so that looks good now the gross profit line is basically irrelevant because we don't have any cost of goods sold. So I could just delete this line altogether. We don't really need the gross profit line. And then the net income is gonna be equal to uh, this item minus this. So it would be equal to the this minus that. And there we have it. So we have the contributions and then the contributions, we wouldn't need to say restricted and unrestricted. I would just say this is contributions, contributions, and then it would be broken out restricted and unrestricted in that format and then the total. So the, then the government grants, the, the net assets, and then uh, you, could do, you could do the similar kind of thing here and break it out between uh, the net assets, have one account that would go and then break it out between the two if you, if you wanted to. And then I won't do it again here. <laughs> and then we have the expenses down below. So here's going to be the expenses. Notice again, they're, they're broken out by um, by their nature here, uh, not by what they're used for, not by the function. So that's just the way QuickBooks generally will will put this. So we're going to have to have this information there. And then again, we can provide the other uh, detailed report, which will provide this information by both function and nature. So we'll do that in, a, in another presentation. So we've got it broken out here. So this isn't too overwhelming to see. There's the total expenses. And this is going to be the, what are we going to call this? If we go back to the other uh, sheet, it's like increase in net assets. Make sure I get it right here. Uh, we're going to say this is going to be in the statement of activities, the increase in net assets. Let's call it. So I'll put that over here. Say that's going to be the increase in net assets. So I'll put that there. And that's gonna be the format of that. Again, we might want to change the format in here. I'm gonna highlight the whole thing, right click on it. And and uh, let's say we we edit format these cells and I put the, the negative numbers in brackets. So I like to make it like currency, negative numbers in brackets. Let's remove the decimals. We can remove the decimals by the way and do some of this formatting uh, in in uh, QuickBooks, if you so choose as well, 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. So then uh, kind of make that a little bit more customized. So there we have that. And that lines up to, to some degree again to, to this report, the format of this report. So it lines up pretty much similar to this. However, it's grouping not by, uh, by function, but by nature, because again, that's how QuickBooks basically uh, sets it up. Now this one is by, is by function, and then it breaks it out by function and nature with this other report, which we can do too. And so we'll, we'll use the classes to do that. So now we can use the classes to break out the, the, you know, the expenses and what they're used for. So we'll do that in a future presentation. So let's go back on over here. And so this is where we're at right now. We've got the two uh, reports. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now note that as you, as you do this, if you were to provide this to somebody else now, uh, you could do this a couple different ways. I'm going to minimize, minimize, minimize. If I was to uh, open up our files that we have at this point, uh, we're going to say, all right, let's open these up. We've got our two reports now. You could give them to someone in PDF format again, but again, this statement of activities isn't formatted as well as it could be in Excel. If we had to print them out and you had to print them out individually like this, then you'd have to collate the reports. So that's kind of, that's not fun. And then in Excel, we can do some added formatting as we've seen, and we can also print it from Excel so that they're already collated. So that would be nicer. And we can make an, we can make a PDF file that we can give to someone with these two reports attached to it. So let's take a look at that now. If I go back over here and I want to send these two reports to somebody, I could use this and the PDF printer to make it a little bit easier. So I can go to the file tab. I can go to let's print the report. And then if you were to print it to a printer to give to like the board of directors or something, the key is that you want to make sure that you print all the entire workbook. So I got the entire workbook. So it has the statement of financial position and uh, the, the not for profit, the statement of activities. And then if then I can print this and it'll it'll print all collated for us. And then if I want to print it as a PDF file, I'll use the Qt PDF file, which is a free program. So you could uh, get the Qt PDF file printer and use that. And that'll allow me to print this as a PDF file with both reports on one PDF file, which I could give to somebody. So I'm going to say print. And then um, and then we'll see where we want to put it. So it's going to ask me where do we want to put it. I'm going to put it here and I'm just going to call it financial statements. Again, I'm going to say financial statements, save that. Then I'll close this. And now we've got this one uh, financial statements PDF that if I wanted to, to attach to an email or send out to the board of directors by email or something like that, then it's all on, on one PDF. I don't have to attach multiple reports. And if you have like, you know, five or 10 reports, this is, this is nicer than even a zipped file. Uh, it's easier for someone to just pick up and and uh, and work with typically. So in any case, that's going to be it for now. Let's get out of here.